Hey guys, it's Miss Thiessen here. Um, today I'm going to be going over lesson five from our home finance unit on property insurance. So let's get started. Imagine going home today and finding your home had been burnt down and all of your belongings were destroyed. If you had no home insurance, you would be left with nothing. So you'd lose all of your money, your property would be gone, you would have to start from ground zero again. However, if you buy the right property insurance, the right home insurance, you would receive money to replace a lot of your possessions and property. Now there's a lot of different ways that home insurance can be purchased and a lot of different factors that um, uh, basically determine what type of home insurance you, you need to buy and how expensive it will be. So property insurance provides coverage in the event of your property being damaged or destroyed by flooding, earthquake, vandalism, or fire. Here are some key terms that we need to know before we can start calculating or doing any of the math involved with property insurance. So the term market value is, it means what something is worth. So what an item would be worth today, what an item is worth Today. So um, this is used a lot actually in car insurance. So when we talk about the book value of a car, that's what a certain car, no matter how old it is, is worth today and what the selling price might be. So this is used more uh, in car insurance. So car insurance uses this and usually called book value. And we'll talk more about that when we actually do our vehicle uh, finance unit. Replacement value. So this is the cost to replace any item, um, maybe after a house is on fire or something like that. So the cost to replace a certain item. Um, so this is what home insurance uh, brokers or the people that sell home insurance would use to determine um, how much money to give you based on what, have, what you've lost. So home insurance uses this. Okay. Another term, tenant's package policy. Now, when you see the word tenant, that basically means renter, so someone that is renting. So as a renter, you need only to purchase insurance for what you own. So if you don't own the home you're in, you're not gonna be paying for the home insurance for that home. So you need only purchase insurance for what you own. So let's say you own, you don't own the home, but you might own the appliances. So you'd wanna purchase insurance for those, but not for the actual house itself. Okay, so here's some other important factors that uh, are used when the, the um, amount of the insurance or the cost of the insurance is taken into account. So all of these things determine the difference in the price of insurance. So Metro, if your house is in a metro area, that means it's located in the city or inside of some kind of city limits. So inside city limits. All right, protected. So metro is in the city, protected is near. So it's still, out, it's, it's outside, your home would be located outside city limits. But, very specific factor with protected, but fire hydrants, so basically when, if your house would be on fire and you have a fire hydrant right nearby, then you're considered to be in the protected area or the protected range. So there are fire hydrants available nearby. Oops, available, there we go. Okay. Now, these four, these first four, determine, these are all, um, these all determine the 
location as to where your house might be. And those are, you'll find those on a table that we'll be looking at either. So this is all about location. And you'll see on the next page, table five talks about this when, uh, when we're gonna be calculating the cost of home insurance. So protected is outside the city limits, but fire hydrants are nearby. Semi-protected means that you're still outside the city, but you're not as protected as if there were fire hydrants nearby. So that means that basically this means that you are outside the city, but you're less than eight kilometers from a fire station or a fire hall. And then lastly, unprotected, it's much further outside the city. So much further outside a city or outside city limits. And it means that you are more than eight kilometers away from a fire hall. So it's much more difficult to access a home or to save a home from a fire if it's unprotected. The homes that are more easily saved from natural disasters would be metro and protected. However, vandalism is probably more uh, prominent in these areas than it would be in these. So different costs for, for different um, levels of protection. So much further outside a city, more than eight kilometers away from a fire hall. Okay. So those are the four location factors that determine the price of home insurance. Let's take a look at these two. And there's a couple more on the next page as well. Deductible. You guys have probably heard this. If you own a vehicle, or maybe some of you might own a home, but if you own a vehicle, you'll know that when you pay insurance on the vehicle, you have to choose which deductible you want to, to pay. So the deductible is what you would pay when you make a claim of some kind. So if you've gotten into a car accident, you probably have maybe done this before. Hopefully not, but at least you'd have some experience with this then. So when, what, this is what you pay when you make a claim. So you would pay the deductible and the insurance company would pay the rest. So let's write that down so that you know exactly what that means. You pay the deductible. And then the insurance company, so whoever is covering your insurance, insurance pays the rest. Okay. So claims free probably should have a dash between it. It's kind of like one term on its own. Claims free, this is a discount that you might get or a customer might get who don't make claims or who have not made claims in the past. So basically that means that you, if you haven't gotten into, if we're talking about car insurance, if you haven't gotten into an accident or anything like that, there's potentially a claims free discount for a customer that's good at staying out of accidents or for a home, in this case, home insurance, where you haven't had to make a claim in the past. You might earn, or you might be able to have a discount on your insurance for that reason. So a discount, for a customer who doesn't make claims or who hasn't made any in the past. So I'll write down who does not make claims. Good. Okay, couple more definitions on the next page and then we'll start looking at some examples and then I'll show you the charts that we need to use in order to complete these. They're on the next couple of pages in your booklet as well. So. Types of insurance, now you're gonna notice on the table on the next couple of pages that um, there's two types of insurance based on where you live that you can choose. You're gonna see here it says basic or comprehensive. On the chart, the word basic is replaced with the word broad, broad or comprehensive. So two types of insurance you can choose based on where you're located. I'm just gonna show you guys the chart for a sec so you can see what it looks like. Here's table five. You can see that the four locations are across the top, metro, protected, semi-protected, and unprotected. And then you can see broad and comprehensive, broad, comprehensive. So let's say you're located in a semi-protected area. You're going to then choose your broad insurance or your comprehensive insurance. So what is the difference between those two? Well, broad insurance, so broad 
This one covers named perils, or basically in other words, in layman's terms, that means only specific types of um, maybe natural disasters or, or vandalism. It would only cover certain types. So broad covers um, named perils. So only specific bad things named perils. While comprehensive, this one covers all perils. So it's gonna be more expensive. This one is less expensive usually. And this one is more expensive because it covers more. Okay, last definition, a burglar alarm or any type of safety feature that your house might have um, would uh, allow you to potentially get a discount on your home insurance as well. So this is a discount or gives a customer discounts for specific safety features. So discount for customers who have enhanced safety features with their home or on their home. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of examples. Now, when you're calculating home insurance or tenants insurance, you need to use the charts that are provided. So we're gonna take a look at what we have listed here and then we're gonna look at our chart and determine from there what we need to do. Okay, so our first example says calculate the annual premium for comprehensive insurance. So we know we're gonna be looking under the comprehensive column given the following details. The house is in the city. Now, if you look back at your definitions, a house in the city would be under metro. That's what we're gonna look for on our table. The house and the contents are worth $125,000. So we're gonna be looking for this number on our table as well. Uh, and that will tell us exactly how many dollars our insurance amount is gonna be. And these people, or this example, um, the the people that are purchasing this insurance have chosen to pay a $200 deductible. So uh, I'm gonna show you what that means on the chart in a minute here. So let's take a look. We know the house is in the city. Here's our table five, homeowner's annual rate for home insurance. We know our house is in the city. So this is the these are the columns we wanna look under. And from our example, we know it's comprehensive. So we're looking under this specific column right here. So Metro comprehensive. Now the next thing we need to do, this. Uh, section here, home evaluator, this is the dollar amount that we want to insure. So in our question here, we want to insure contents and house worth 125,000. So we're gonna look for that number on here. It's right here, 125,000. And again, we're matching it up with this column. So it looks like $639. So we know that the insurance is gonna be $639. However, we're not finished yet. It says here that we want to pay a $200 deductible. Now, at the top, you'll see this says $500 deductible. So they're assuming this is the amount you're gonna pay all on any amount on this chart if you're paying a $500 deductible, if you're choosing the $500 deductible option. In this case, we're choosing a $200 deductible. What that means for both this type of insurance, for both homeowner's insurance and for tenant's insurance, that means you're paying, you can see down here, $200 deductible add 10%. So no matter what the cost on here, you would add an additional 10% to that if you're only choosing to pay the lower deductible, okay? So we're gonna do that. So this just means we need to add 10% of the amount that we found on our chart. So let's do that. So we've got our $639. So step one is going to be to convert 10% into a decimal because we can't multiply by a dollar amount unless we change this to a decimal. So step one, 10%. We want to change that to a decimal, we need to divide by 100. Anytime you have a percent, you want to divide by 100 to get your decimal. So that's 0.1. Step two, we want to take our $639 that we found and we want to multiply it by our decimal. And that gives us $63.90. Then our last step, step three, is to add our extra 10%, which is our 6390, to our original amount that we needed to pay for the insurance. So we've got $639 plus 6390. So what is our total insurance cost for this example? It is going to be $702.90. Okay, so that was great. 
Um, but there's some other uh, there's some other examples that we're going to go through now uh, here now that you're going to notice um, we have to do a little bit of extra work for. So not all of the numbers or not everything we need is directly on the chart. So let's take a look at this next one. So it says, calculate the annual premium for a comprehensive, again, we're doing comprehensive insurance, so we know where we're going to look, uh, given the following details. The house is not in the city, but fire hydrants are available. So if you remember looking back at our definitions, because there's fire hydrants available, this is considered to be protected. So that's the column we're going to look under. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. The house and the contents are worth $265,000. And I'm going to show you the chart in a second and explain why this one, this amount makes it a little bit tricky. Then last but not least, we have a $200 deductible. So we know that whatever amount we have to pay, we are going to need to add 10% to it. So first of all, let's take a look at our chart and see if we can find $265,000 under our home evaluator column here. So if we go under here and you take a look, oh boy, okay, it ends at $220,000. Now you'll notice that there's a little number on the bottom of the chart and there's a little star beside it. If you look down here, it says charges for each additional $5,000 increase. So any amount $5,000 over this last amount here is an extra however much per 5,000, okay? So 220,000 is our, is our last amount on our chart. So the first thing we're gonna do here, because we our amount is over that, we're gonna take our 260, $5,000 and we're going to subtract $220,000 from that, that last amount on our chart that we can't see. So step one here, we're going to take our $265,000 and subtract $220,000 from it. So what is left? How much money is over the biggest amount on our chart? Well, if you calculate that out, you end up with $45,000. Now we need to determine how many that how many five thousands over two hundred and twenty thousand this is so we're going to take that amount and divide it by five thousand so step two we take our forty five thousand and we divide by five thousand and that's going to give us um, the that's going to give us the amount of times we need to multiply that bottom number by so that gives us nine okay so here's step three Okay, now we're gonna take a look at our chart. This is the important part. So we need to find the protected column right here and we need to find the comprehensive right here. So we're gonna go all the way down to the bottom and we see the number 16 here. This is the number we're gonna multiply by our additional charges, our $5,000 increase. So we're gonna multiply $16, this is a dollar amount. We're gonna multiply $16 by our nine times. So there's nine five thousands over 220,000, so we're gonna go nine times $16, and that is equal to $144, okay? Now that's not our total amount. The, the next thing we need to do is take a look at the bottom value on our chart. So we're gonna take the one right above the 16. So we know that we're looking under protected comprehensive, and we know that we have to pay for sure this amount, so $755 plus $16 for every 5,000 over 220, which we already calculated. So all we have to do now is add our $144 that we just calculated to 755. So we're gonna take our uh, $144 and we're gonna add 755 to that. And this is our total amount before adding our 10%. So we end up with $899. Okay, so that's the tricky part about this. The tricky part is having to add an extra $16 per uh, $5,000 over this. So we, we know we have um, nine times more 5,000s uh, over 220,000 from our original amount here. So now our very last step is to take our amount that we have, our $899, and we need to add 10% to that because again, remember in the table, this is automatically, we're assuming that you're paying a $500 deductible, but $200, if you're doing that, if you're choosing to pay that, it's adding an extra 10%. So again, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do it quickly. You're just gonna multiply this by 0 0.1, just like we did in our last example, and that ends up giving us 
$89.90. You'll notice that it just basically moves our decimal place over one space there. So we end up with $89.90 and then we add those two together. So step six, we need to take $899 and add our $89.90 and our total insurance premium for this home is going to be $988.90. So there is our final amount. Good. Okay. That's basically one of the trickiest examples that you're going to be seeing, okay? So let's take a look at one more example. Now this one you'll notice it says it's a tenant's coverage. So you'll see another chart uh, that says tenant's package policy and it looks like this. Now you can see that the coverage amounts are lower because usually as a renter you don't own as much as a homeowner would. So here, um, again standard, this is just like broad, that's like the broad form and then the comprehensive form. Okay, so you're, we're going to be using the tenant's package policy. Again, the premium increases by 10% if we choose to pay the $200 deductible, but we'll do that at the end. Let's see what our example says here. Oh, so calculate the annual premium for comprehensive tenant's coverage valued at, this should be a D, valued at $40,000. So again, we're looking for comprehensive. Let's find that $40,000 amount on here. So we're going to look on here. We have our $40,000 and we're going to skip past the broad and we're going to the comprehensive, it looks like it's $269. So let's write that down, $269, good. Okay, now we know that because we have the $200 deductible, we need to add 10% to our amount. And again, same idea, we're gonna take our $269 and we're gonna multiply it by 0 0.1. That moves the decimal place over one space and then the zero will be gone. And that gives us $26.90. Then we're going to add our 10% to our original price. We're going to add those together. So we're going to take $269 plus $26.90. And our total cost for our tenant's coverage is going to be $295.90. All right, thanks for watching.